a very warm welcome to Shomu's Biology Academy and this is going to be a microbiology lecture series video. Now if we talk about how this uh, plasma membrane helps in the uptake of nutrition, okay, because they need nutrition, right, if they want to survive, they want to continue with their metabolic activity, they need nutrition and for that, because if they have nutrition, they are going to get energy and because of that, their metabolic system is going to work and they are going to survive. But the problem is that plasma membrane functions as a barrier. They are going to allow only some molecules inside them. So how this uptake of nutrition occurs if there is a barrier in between the passing. Okay, so that's what we are going to study. So as we know, they behave like a barrier yet also they have to allow the movement of nutrient because it's important. Now, obtaining energy and nutrient source is one of the most important job of an organism, okay, because uh, primary function of plasma membrane, as you say, okay. Why it is so important? As I say, because if there is no nutrition, there is no energy and they just can't uh, deal with their whole metabolic uh, process and they're not going to survive. Now, this nutrition could be either macroelement or it could be micronutrient. When I say macroelement, that means they require this particular minerals in a large amount. Okay, this could be nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium. Okay, they are macro elements. They need them in larger amounts. Okay, it was it is found in protein, lipids, nucleic acid, and some carbohydrates. You can say. Okay, and then there are micronutrients which are required in small amounts. Okay, yet in small amount, but they do require this uh, nutrients. Okay, this could be boron, copper, iron, fluorine, magnesium, and all. Uh, these are the part in which helps in certain part in the enzyme. And they aid in the catalysis of reaction and maintenance of protein structure. So, if you need to maintain the protein structure, okay, or catalyze the reaction, you need enzyme. And for that, you need this micronutrients. So, both are very much important. Okay. Now, if we say there are some molecules which are needed for survival, but the bacteria they sell, they sell cannot synthesize this molecule. So, they have to take this molecule from outside environment, right? This particular, you can say, uh, molecules are called as growth factors. Okay, they themselves cannot synthesize it, and that's why they need to obtain it from the outside environment. Now there are three type of growth factors. Uh, you can say amino acids, purine pyramids, and vitamins. Okay, when I say amino acid, you can say uh, building blocks of protein. Okay, there are 20, 21 type of amino acid present. Okay. Purine and pyramidins, uh, you can say A, T, G, C, okay, the backbone of DNA or nucleic acid, okay, they are made up of this purine and pyramidin which is having a nitrogen base, sorry, nitrogen base, okay, so, and the vitamins, okay, uh, you can say water soluble vitamin, or lipid soluble vitamins, okay, it could be vitamin A, C, vitamin E, or lipid soluble. Okay, so there are different kinds of vitamins, some nitrogen base, okay, some amino acid work as a growth factor. That means they need it, okay, but they cannot synthesize it themselves. So they may need it from outside environment, okay. Now, as we know that plasma membrane is selectively permeable and they are not going to allow all of them by themselves. So, they need a particular uptake mechanism for it, okay, a specific uptake mechanism which are going to help this kind of molecules, okay, to pass through this membrane and so help in the surviving of the bacteria. Now, bacteria can only take dissolved molecule, right, if the uh, molecule can dissolve it in the water then and only, only then bacteria is gonna take it okay now bacteria have the special capacity that they can move able to they are able to move nutrient up a concentration gradient when I say up a concentration gradient that means 
okay when i say concentration gate is that means from higher concentration to lower concentration okay any molecule which i need is moving from a higher concentration to lower concentration but there is going to be one point where the concentration of this molecule is going to be uh, similar balance in both the side and that when the transferring of this particular molecule is going to stop but bacteria have this capacity to transfer a molecule even if there is a balanced amount of uh, you can say molecule in this thing even that it's just going to take it and take it in and take it in but it is possible only if they use energy right okay and why this particular thing is needed like they have enough for now amount of nutrients right now why they need more and more nutrients okay it is going to help them in the case of nutrient poor habitat okay if that is less nutrient out nutrient outside uh, the environment okay so they are going to it's just they're going to have a backup to for surviving okay that backup is called as food storage they're going to store the nutrient in some manner so if there is a condition when there is nutrition deprivation they are going to just help that nutrition which they have stored like this okay so that different kind of uh, transport mechanism this mechanism could be a four type very first is simple passive diffusion facilitate passive diffusion primary and secondary active transport and group translocation as you can see the very first two one are passive diffusion that means they do not need energy okay and if there is active transport they are going to need energy for the transporting of molecule okay so if we see this is a general uh, you can see idea of membrane transport okay this is how simple diffusion works that means it's just going to allow the molecule from outside to inside that's it okay uh, they do not need any facility proteins or anything else to help them okay then there is uh, aquaporins you can see them as a channel okay uh, these are particular channels which are going to you know it's like facilitate Uh, diffusion these are the proteins uh, transport protein which are going to help or facilitate give a facility okay uh, to molecule to pass from outside to inside uh, and these are particularly aquaporins that means they are specially uh, channels uh, designed for water so they are going to allow only the aqua molecules from them and just run a pass to a passive diffusion again they do not need any energy here okay now if we go further and go for a gated ion channel okay so the ion is going to pass through it okay but it is gated that means it is closed okay as you can see here sorry sorry okay that's closed now if the ion needs to pass this gate has to be open as you can see here if it is open then it is going to pass and then again it's going to close for this we need energy right and there could be uh, you can see three kind of uh, transport if we talk about a system it could be uniport in which as you can see here the membrane is just going to come from outside to inside then it could be uh, you can say of two type in which there is a symporter and then there is antiporter in symporter two molecules come together from outside to inside and in antiporter it's like anti okay they are going to oppose it and it's just like that like one molecule comes from outside to inside the other molecule should go from inside to outside and and only then this antiporter you can say uh, channel or carrier we they are said as carrier are going to work okay so this is how different kind of transport to uh, work and we are going to see that one by one so if we say uh, passive diffusion this diffusion has no energy they do not uh, required an energy okay 
This is a simple diffusion. Molecules move from a region of higher concentration to a lower concentration. Okay, as you can see here, this is a higher concentration and they are going to move from the higher concentration to lower concentration. Okay. Now, at the point, okay, when there is nutrient accumulation in the cell, there are much and much, they are just going to coming inside, coming inside and that there is so much nutrient inside. At that point, point okay the rate of diffusion is going to decrease okay why because it is going to be balanced okay between the concentration gradient okay so that's why it is coming higher concentration to lower concentration okay but at one point it is going to stop when the concentration of both side is equal right so when it is going to be near at that point Okay, it's gonna just decrease the rate of movement. It's just become slow. O2, CO2 as we say, oxygen, carbon dioxide, H2O, they just allow it by this simple passive diffusion. Okay, they are able to enter in that. But what if they are larger molecule? Okay, for example, some ions, ions cannot pass through like this normally. Okay. For some polar substance, okay, for that kind of large molecule ions and some polar substance, and they need some other mechanisms, okay, and that mechanism involves a specialized protein which are called as transport proteins, okay. This transport proteins could be either called as channel or some are called as carriers, okay. So if we go for the second one which is called as facilitate diffusion again this is a uh, passive diffusion they do not need energy here and why so that because they also work and uh, sorry uh, transport the molecule from higher concentration to lower concentration okay now it could be as we saw either channel or carrier okay channel are the one who can pass the polar molecules for example we saw is aquaporins right this is a channel they just gonna take that particular molecule and pass through them okay or that could be a carrier okay they are saturated proteins as we know uh, they are gonna transport the solute molecules and the carriers are uh, you can say kind of different because when they transfer the solute from them they just gonna change their configuration okay there is change in the structure as you can see here if this is the molecule okay they are taking it inside they just gonna open the first part first then when the molecule goes in between here okay the upper part just got you know it there's a configurational change as you can see here in the diagram okay it just blocked and it just releases in here when the molecule just got releases inside the upper side again got closed it's like clip okay when you hang a cloth with a clip it's just like that as you can see okay and when the molecule got released and it's just gonna release and then they again go to this kind of structural change so as you can see after the solute molecule binds to the outside the carrier is throughout thought to change the configuration sorry conformation and release the molecule inside the cell okay and it changes back to its original shape and ready to pick up another molecule and this is how facilitate diffusion work so very first one was simple and then there is facilitate diffusion this both are passive diffusion that means they do not need energy to pass this kind of molecules now if we go for third one which is an active transport that means they need or require cellular energy if they want to pass the molecule okay why they need energy because it is, it is active transport here the transport of molecule is going to be from lower concentration to higher concentration okay that means it's gonna go against the concentration gradient as you can see here it's gonna go against the concentration gradient okay it also involves carrier protein but with a great specificity okay and it resembles the facilitate diffusion see it's just like facilitate diffusion but the thing is okay that here they need energy to transport okay 
uh, when we talk about passive carrier proteins as you can see here they themselves got open because it's higher to lower concentration they know the bacteria needs it but here the carrier protein are not gonna open themselves they need something okay so the carrier protein can get open okay and if we talk about primary active transport and there are metabolic inhibitors this is basically a comparison between the previous one and this one that this metabolic inhibitor there are some inhibitors that can block the energy production okay that can block the production of ATP and due to that the active transport can be inhibited okay but this is not going to affect the facilitated diffusion the passive one why because in facilitated diffusion they do not need any energy okay so it doesn't matter you block the energy production or not okay this is going to work but here in active transport they need energy okay and for that energy should be produced and if you stop the production of energy it automatically stops the production of sorry it automatically stop the active transport okay now if we start with the primary active transport as we saw here there are two kind of active transport in this particular thing it's primary and secondary so uh, primary active transport as you can see here are called as abc transporter which is atp binding cathodes transporter okay uh, particular we see they are uniporters uh import of substance they are unipot that means they just gonna allow one molecule pass through outside to inside okay and it's primary that's why it's uniporter where we are not gonna talk about the secondary active transport they are gonna be simport okay or ng port now if we say here what is going to happen now this particular thing is a molecule okay and then there is solute binding protein so this is your solute and this is the protein which is going to bind with it okay so this solute binding protein is now going to be here it's just like they're going to knock okay uh, can i enter please because in normal state if there is a higher to lower concentration they themselves are going to open because they know that uh, guests are going to come you know like but here they do not know so they have to know okay and here because it is lower to higher concentration they need energy so to open this particular you can see pore they need a change in the structure and for that the ATP is required so you can see here okay the ATP is gonna require that is ADP to ADP also is gonna release and because it's you for use of energy the structure of carrier protein is gonna change and it's gonna open and this particular solid binding protein okay, is just gonna release the solute inside the cell this is how the primary active transporter works a very common example is E. coli, okay, which transport variety of sugar and amino acids by this mechanism. Now, if we go for secondary active transport, okay, they have MFS protein, which are called as major facilitator fam super family protein. Okay, these are the protein which couples uh, the potential energy of iron gradient to transport the substance without modifying that. See what this particular uh, you can say transporter are gonna do to this particular super family just take helps of iron gradient okay that if you can help me matlab, like you are doing your work and besides doing your work you can also help us to go inside the you can say cytoplasm and that's exactly what uh, ions are gonna do here they like, just gonna help this particular molecule to pass through the cytoplasm and that's what they're gonna you can say work that's how they're gonna work here as I say they are co-transporter in active transport uh, primary active transport there was uniport here there could be simport or antiport and now we know when I say simport both the molecule the ion and the substance which we want inside the cell I want to transport from outside to inside both of them or if it is anti-port carrier it's going to be like 
the ion is gonna go from inside to outside and in response the molecule the substance which we need is gonna come from outside to inside so this could be a way of transporting the secondary uh, way of how secondary active transport works a very common example is as you can see this uh, the lactose permease okay which are going to harness the energy by using the higher concentration of h plus iron right as we know they are going to use the iron gradient concentration in uh, transferring a molecule from outside to inside okay uh, to drive the concentration of lactose inside of E. coli is well studied. So what they are going to do basically there is lactose outside and I want this I mean this bacteria want this lactose inside their you can say uh, cell okay. So there is a transporter present here which is lactose transporter but what is the problem there is transporter and there is a molecule the problem is the concentration here we are taking this lactose okay from lower concentration to higher concentration and for that we need energy okay so what they are going to do they are just going to take help of iron again okay, as you can see that H plus this is simple as you can see here both the molecules are going inside together okay only and only if this iron goes inside then and only then the lactose can go inside with it so it's like a couple entry you can see uh, the lactose cannot go alone in the club if we, they want to go alone they are not allowed if we they have a partner with them then and only then this lactose can go into the club you can say right there are clubs where there is single entry and there is couple entries only so this is something like you can say couple entry only what is going to happen this H plus is just going to come together it's like you know when there is a they just got enter because there is no uh, single entry the two person come together and we just go like couple and when we go inside we're just going to separate it so can that's what exactly this lactose and H plus ion does they just going to come together because they want entry inside it they just gonna enter and once they enter inside they just gonna apart their way that you go out do your work I'm gonna do my work again and the work of iron is that they again go outside and then they just cycle it's gonna continue and each time they come inside they just gonna take this lactose from outside to inside and that is that is how they work now if we go to the fourth one uh, which is group translocation in previous one uh, when I say they pass the molecule outside to inside uh, okay and not modify that particular molecule okay that means when I take glucose or when I take lactose when it comes inside it stays glucose or it stays lactose but in the case of group translocation it's not a uh, same thing again it's uh, active transport that means they require cellular energy because they are active transport they are going lower concentration to higher concentration right as i say the distinguished characteristic that molecule is chemically modified and it is brought into the cell phosphorylation so the molecule i'm gonna take inside it's chemically gonna modify when it comes inside the cell you can basically most of the time it, it is because of the phosphorylation okay best known example or the translocation system is the sugar phosphor transfer transferase system which is called as PTS you know a phosphorus transferase system sugar because they are going to transfer sugars and the sugar could be either glucose mannose or any other sugar you know why phosphorylating them PEP okay is the phosphate donor as you can see here PEP is a gonna be the phosphate donor here okay now in normal case that could be a ATP synthesis but here okay uh, the energy present in this PEP okay is used to energize the uptake 
rather than ATP synthesis. As you can see, they are energizing the uptake of molecule from outside to inside. Okay, so if we go and focus on the diagram, this is the outside and this is the inside and I want to take glucose molecule inside the cell and this is the direction of transport. Okay, so this particular you can say enzyme 2C is the one who is a carrier okay this particular protein is gonna allow this molecule inside but because this cannot uh, come inside you can say alone so they need to get chemically modified and for that the PEP is gonna help them so what is gonna happen PEP comes convert themselves into pyruvate with the help of enzyme 1 and when this process you know uh, happens they release phosphate group and this phosphate group is going to transfer with the non-specific and specific component and it's going to transfer to this particular you can say carrier protein now this have a uh, phosphate and because of that it's going to open and take the glucose and it's going to phosphorylate this glucose which is a phosphorylation happens here and when it comes inside it's glucose 6 phosphate because on the 6th position the phosphate is bind with it and it is chemically changed right now as you can see when we try to take it inside it was glucose and now when it is inside it is glucose 6 phosphate so it chemically modifies the molecule okay this is how group translocation works now these are the four uh, uh, different kind of transport system we study uh, first one again passive low need of energy and the second uh, the third and fourth needs energy okay now there is one uh, special transport process okay to local one we have studied it's called as iron tub uptake okay iron as we know is very essential nutrient uh, for them also okay it is going to use with many enzymes and cytochromes too okay so the thing is yeah normally also iron get to uh, be inside through normal translocation systems but the thing is because they are extremely insoluble okay the nature of uh, ferric iron that they are extremely insoluble okay and even its derivatives it could be a 2 or anything they leaves a little free iron available for transport okay so there is transport of iron by a normal uh, systems but it is very you can say little amount of iron and bacteria need more amount of iron if they want to continue with their enzyme work and all that okay so a special uh, you can see barriers okay which are called as siderophores uh, barriers for iron iron bearers you can say okay they just gonna help in this translocation which is called a special kind of transport process they just gonna bind with this iron and supply this ferric iron to the cell okay if we say again we have taken an example of e coli okay so this is the iron this is the iron okay this is siderophore so siderophore is a bearer of iron so it's just gonna take this iron inside them and because of the siderophore it's just gonna transfer from outside to inside and they're gonna see this is a place in between the two uh, membrane right this is bilayer right our plasma membrane and this is the place in between that here the special kind of protein called chaperone is gonna take this whole uh, siderophore ion complex and now it is chaperone siderophone ion complex okay and this chaperone is gonna work like you can say it's just gonna take a parcel from one side and it's just gonna leave it to the door when it's gonna need so it's just gonna work like you can say uh, a post office just gonna take the parcel from here and put it on that address okay it's just gonna come here and release the siderophore and iron inside so as you can see and when they go inside it's just gonna uh, detach from each other and now there is iron inside the cell 
that is how our special transport process works okay so i hope you got the whole point that bacterial structure in bacterial structure in particular this uh, session we had focus on the uh, plasma membrane and how this plasma membrane work the function of plasma membrane that they work as a selectively permeable barrier and how the uptake of nutrition got uh, they allowed if they are working as a barrier so there are basically four kind of thing when two of them were passive and two of them were active and then one special transport process i hope you got the uh, information what you need thank you if you like our video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and colleagues and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you get more and more of this kind of video in future thank you